Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here with another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's episode, uh, we're here with a blue-white uh, spirit deck. Uh, sorry this is coming out so late, I was on holiday last week and didn't really get a chance to do much recording, so I apologise for that. This is going to be coming out on Monday, uh, I'm recording it on Monday, it'll be coming out tonight once I've rendered it and uploaded it. I'll also do a gameplay episode after this one and get this out tonight as well, so this uh, deck tech and a small amount of gameplay plus a full gameplay video will be out today hopefully, if that is the plan. If not, the gameplay will be out tomorrow instead. But for now, let's go on with the deck. So uh, this is a deck full of flyers and a few combat tricks and stuff like that as well. So to start off with, we've got the one white mana Toppelgeist. So it's a 1-1 one, one flyer. And when it ends the battlefield, we can tap target creature and opponent controls. Also, if we get the Delirium, not very likely, but there's a small possibility that if we do, we can tap a target creature at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, which is quite nice as well. We've got Stoneforge Masterwork, so with a deck with a lot of evasions, so pretty much every creature in this deck has flying. It's nice to have this Stone Stoneforge Masterwork where equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. So basically we're playing pretty much 100% um, spirits in terms of our creature base, apart from like one, one creature, uh, which I'll explain later on. So this is quite nice, so it pumps up our spirit, one of our spirits, uh, by plus one plus one for every other spirit we control. Essence Flux is quite nice, so basically we can save our, save one spirit from like a removal spell by using Essence Flux, and because basically again we're playing almost 100% spirits, when it comes back into play, uh, so basically what this card does, it exiles that creature and returns it to the battlefield, so will allow any kind of removal to fizzle, and when it comes back it has a plus one plus one counter on it, which is quite nice. Then got Rattle Chains, which is a two mana fla uh, flash flying spirit. Also, when it enters the battlefield, target spirit gains hexproof, so we can basically use this to give a creature hexproof until end of turn. And then we can also use this to cast any spirit as though they had flash as well, which is quite cool. Uh, we've got Erdworld Illuminator, so a 1-3 uh, Flying Spirit. Uh, also, this synergizes up quite nicely with the Bygone Bishop, so if we can trigger the Bygone Bishop's uh, Investigate, we can also investigate a second time with the Erdvol Illuminator in play. So that leads on to the Bygone Bishop, so a 3-mana three 2-3 two, three Flying Spirit, which allows us to investigate whenever we play a creature with 3-mana uh, or less, uh, that costs 3-mana or less, sorry, which is basically the Spectral Shepherd, Erdvold Illuminator, Rattle Chains, or Toppelgeist, or another Bygone Bishop. We've then got Spectral Shepherd, so uh, it's a 2-2 two, two, 3-mana sp Spirit with Flying, and we can also use it to bounce Spirits back to our hand to re-trigger Enter the Battlefield effects or to save them from removal. Then got Always Watching, so uh, a 3 mana enchantment which basically gives all of our creatures uh, plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance. Then got Make a Stand, so we can give all of our creatures plus 1 0 and Indestructible until end of turn, which is an instant. Angelic Purge is a bit of spot removal in case we need to get rid of a big flyer in our way, but most of the time we can just swing over the head of pretty much everything else. Pocket Theory guys is a nice 4 mana spirit, which basically when it comes down, if we control another spirit, we gain 3 life, so a good for kind of but pumping back up our life and also is a nice 2-3 body as well. Then got Towergeist, another 4 mana spirit with flying, uh, it's 2-2, two, two, but basically when it comes into play we can look at the top two cards of our library, put one into hand and one into graveyard. Thunderclap Wyvern is the only non-spirit creature token in the deck, but you know, it's a flying deck, so we need to include Thunderclap Wyvern. So it's a flash, so it's a 4 mana flash creature with flying itself and all other creatures we control with flying get plus one plus one, so we've got all three copies of that in the deck. To finish off with, we've got uh, two copies of Tenacity, which is basically a four mana instant combat trick or anthem, where we can basically give all our creatures plus one plus one. They gain lifelink and they untap until uh, untap as well. So we swing swing with all our creatures, play this, they all get untapped, they gain lifelink, and then they essentially untap to block with next turn as well. In terms of the mana base, we've got ten planes, eight islands. Two Prairie Streams, two Glacial Fortresses, and two Meandering Rivers. I uh, wasn't sure if we really needed to put anything else in play, um, in terms of the mana base that is, so okay, let's, let's flick to the mana, if we can get all the way to the end. Just have a quick look whether or not it's worth putting in any of the uh, any of the unique lands. Oh my god, we've got to get all the way to the end here, haven't we? Come on. Yeah, just, just thinking about it now before we start the episode, wondering if it's worth putting any of the... Uh, unique lands in, although we've got to flick right to the very end to find that, haven't we? Come on, going to get there eventually. Do, 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 do. There we go, we're into the colourless spells, and then we should be into mana. There we go, let's have a quick flick through. So, I don't think there's any kind of special white-blue mana 
Uh, Westvale Abbey is okay, but not really worth it. Oran Reef, again, not worth it. No, mostly because it's col colourless spells. I mean, we could go Foundry of the Console, I suppose, but, you know, we, we could put some flies in play, but I don't really think it's that useful, so... No, it doesn't really look like it's, it's really worth putting any of the kind of special lands in. So, yep, that's the, that's the deck. Let's go play some games. Okay, guys, here we are for game number one. I completely missed who we were playing there as I was uh, not paying attention. But, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good opening hand. So we've got a Topple guy, we've got a Stoneforge Masterwork. So we're playing the Rank 24 Big Chester Door 89. So I think we'll just start off with a Stoneforge Masterwork here. Don't really want to play Topple Guys turn one if we don't have to. I'd rather kind of like play it and tap down a creature, something like that. So we need one more mana to get Tower Guys down uh, on turn four. Okay, so we've got white blue as well, so we've got Meandering River. Okay, so we've got a Maker Stand, which is quite nice. So I think in this case, we're going to play out Topple Geist now. Uh, drop Spectral Shepherd next turn. I mean, we can always bounce back Topple Geist uh, using Spectral Shepherd if we need to. Be nice to get that fourth mana down at some point. Okay, so we've got only white blue at the moment. So, okay, looks like we're playing white blue humans. So we've got Handware Militia Captain. So uh, we'll basically be looking to just outpace the kind of the unflying white blue human deck. So we'll swing with the uh, topple geist here. Play down the spectral shepherd. Yeah, unless he's playing enchantments, uh, I, I'm fairly sure we're just going to have the ability to just keep going over this guy's head, which is quite nice. So we won't be able to block handware militia captain here, but. Uh, be nice if we found one of our angelic edicts or we're just looking to just like aggro this guy down um as we've got the flyers to just keep going over his head so he's played a knight of the white orchid so he gets himself an extra mana which is nice for him so i'm guessing he's splashed the blue in here mostly for reflector mage is my assumption uh, we'll just skip attack there as we want to keep our spectral shepherd around be nice if we got our fourth mana here for Tower Guys. Like I said, we've got the Tenacity and the Maker Stand. So fourth mana, we're basically looking pretty. Okay, we've got a Maker Stand here. Now, I could just start dropping this now. I'm actually instead going to equip the uh, Stoneforge Masterwork on top of the Spectral Shepherd. Uh, do we swing with both here? I think we do. Uh, just so we can kind of hopefully stay ahead of him. We do have the Maker Stand as well. So potentially later on. So we're taking down to 15. So fourth mana tower guys would be nice right about now, just so we can actually, you know, get a fourth spirit down, draw an additional card. But we do have the two maker stands as well for just pumping up all our creatures later on. And fourth mana as well will get us tenacity. So provided we do swing into that fourth mana, we will be able to refill our life total quite nicely. And he has played the always watching. We could do that ourselves, ideally. That would be nice. So he's basically swinging for six now. I mean, we don't care about the vigilance because, like I said, we we're swinging over his head. But uh... so we're going to go down to twelve. We're going to get fourth mana. Excellent. That's what I'm looking for. So we will drop tower geist here. Probably do tenacity next turn. So we do get to draw a card, and we will go for rattle chains. I think. And then we to attack with these two. So at this point, I think we just got to race him down. I said tenacity. I think will be a good play next turn, just because that's going to allow us to just gain a whole bunch of life back and then swing for quite a lot of damage. So yeah, if we go with tenacity next turn, we'll basically get back three. I got second always watching. Wow, that's pretty terrifying. So he's going to swing for eight here. I think we should be okay with the tenacity though. So we're, next turn we're swinging for 2, 7, 10. Although he's about to bounce back my tower geist. Which is kind of sad for me as I did want to play out tenacity there and swing. So we are. I think we're going to have to play out tenacity anyway. That, the, that double always watching is pretty terrifying. As like I said, the reflector mage is one of the main reasons to splash blue into a human deck. Now, can we survive next turn? Oh, we do have the always the, do you have the angelic purge. Although, never think about this. Can we? If we 
If we go for tenacity, swing with that one. Um, I'm, just not, I, I'm just trying to figure out here if we can actually, you know, win this. So if we swing with the Spectral Shepherd for four, gain four life, we go back up to eight. Yeah, that doesn't actually keep us in the game. So I'm almost tempted to just, like, exile, say, for example, the Reflector Mage. Or we could also exile and always watching. Ah, this, none of these are good options, basically. So I think at this point we've probably just lost. Like, if he didn't have the Reflector Mage there and we had the uh, Tower Guys, I think we would have been okay. But because we basically... Because he did bounce that back. I think we would, we would have been swinging for lethal there. If that was the case. Or do I just kind of like double block these two. And then go for a, a, a maker stand. And like. No even that doesn't work. Because basically. Even if we were to block two of these. Um, with the maker stand. Uh, we'd still take four damage to the face. So. I, I can't see any way of us winning here. Against these four creatures. I'm just trying to like figure this out. The angelic purge one of them it doesn't really work and that only puts us that, that then puts us back down to three health which doesn't really help Ugh, full of bad options here like i could tenacity on like swing get the life back um and then block next turn i think that's going to be our only option here so if we swing play tenacity We do get six health back, so do go back up to ten here, taking down to four. So basically I've just gotta like survive this turn, depending on what he's got. So I need to block at least one of these. Okay, so he's got Tali's Lieutenant, so we're probably dead here, because I can ugh. If I want to win, basically, I can't block all three of these. Yeah, I think I'm dead at this point. And he's got a hope against hope, so... You get first strike. Yeah, the double always watching there was pretty terrifying. And the fact that if he hadn't bounced back my tower, guys, we would have been okay. So, going to block you... Yeah, if, like, for example, if, if, that had any, if this had been, for example, two 4-4s, four we would have been able to win here. But uh, unfortunately, um, we are just dead, I think. I mean, we, we'll, we'll have a look and see what we get, but uh, I think at this point, I'm pretty screwed. So I can't see any way of us winning, put it that way. Uh, we got a topple guys, but that doesn't really help. So yeah, I think I think we're dead. So uh, that's a, that's annoying, but never mind. Okay, guys, here we are for game number two. So we're playing the rank 28D and lots of squares after it. I will double check that. I'm going to draw a new hand there. Uh, that's a really nice hand, actually. So we've got the Erdvold Illuminator, the Bygone Bishop. We've got the Stoneforge Masterwork and an Essence Flux. Essence Flux would have been quite nice uh, last game as well because I could have Essence Fluxed uh, my uh, creature in the air. So, yeah, we're playing... Uh, sorry, it's D, four, three squares, C, what, however many squares that was. So I think we'll play out... I'll start off with the pro stream, why not? So yeah, I'm not really sure how strong this deck is. I've been playing it a little bit and had some success. Like, you just got to be fairly aggressive with this deck and just hope that your opponent just can't uh, shut you down too soon. Decks with lots of removal just don't work with this deck either. So I think we'll go for the Stoneforge Masterwork here. Try and get the Bygone Bishop out next turn, the Erdvold Illuminator out after that. Do have the spot removal with the uh, angelic purge potentially, so we can maybe use the tokens uh, generated by the bygone bishop to. Very nice. We're going to find a fourth mana as well, so we've got a potential another sack for the angelic purge as well, in case we don't want to use the uh, clues generated by the bygone bishop. So we'll be able to drop an Erdvold Illuminator here uh, and actually generate two tokens, I believe. So he's just played out three wastes so far, which is interesting. Not entirely sure what he's doing, but uh, so we will drop you. And I'm hoping that do we get these. Ah, no, we don't get the second clue. That's that, that that's a shame. I wasn't. I was kind of like thinking, do we get that? But uh, oops, lazy. I won't equip the Stoneforge Masterwork yet. Hold open the Essence Flux or the clue potentially for next turn. So we'll see what he does here.
Okay, so we've got a Ruins of Auron Reef, so he gets to put a plus one, plus one counter on target, um, target creature. Oh, I completely forgot to actually sacrifice my clue there, which was a bit silly of me, so, uh, we will topple guys here, I think. Which will allow us to basically generate two clues. And then I think what we'll do is we'll equip you. There we go. And then we can swing for five here. Oopsie daisy. Yeah, I could have drawn an extra card there from one of the clues, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, this guy's not really played anything else yet. I need to adjust my microphone. It's really annoying me. It's falling down. I think I need a new microphone stand. I think it's what it's trying to tell me because it seems to be falling down all the time nowadays. So he's played out nothing yet and he's just, you know, he's just got nothing. So, uh, oh, just as so we found the thunderclap with him. But uh, we're going to leave the game and move on to a third game, I think. Okay, guys, here we have for game number three. We're playing the rank 25 Kotata Sasa. I don't know. I'll, I'll double check that in a second. Uh, this is a nice hand. Um, yeah, I think we'll keep this. So we've got an Erdvold Illuminator, turn 2, Spectral Shepherd, turn 3, Potential Tower Guys, turn 4. Yeah, we're playing Costa, Costa, Costa. Oh, I don't know. Okay, looks like we might be playing Elves. My microphone sound is still slipping. Hang on. Just adjusted it as well. Got to make sure it's really tight. There we go. Uh, okay, so we'll drop the planes here and the Stoneforge Masterwork. Just get that down straight away. There we go. This is like our uh, this was like our werewolves deck um, equivalent basically. So uh, you know we had the what's it called the the heirloom art, art, artifact. Now we've got the Stoneforge masterwork instead. Yeah, it looks like we're playing elves here. So basically, we want to just kind of drop as many of our spirits as fast as possible and start swinging at his face, same as him. I'm fairly sure he might be able to outpace me here just by the fact that there's more one-drop elves than there are one-drop spirits. I mean, we could be all right. Depends on how fast he gets all of his tools down, how fast we get all of our tools down. Okay, so, oh, very nice. We actually managed to find our uh, Thunderclap Wyvern, which could be pretty critical for us, uh, you know, being able to beat him down faster than he can beat us down. So we're going to be getting Spectral Shepherd down next turn. Okay, so he's got a Sylvan Ranger. Hang on guys, my microphone stand is gone again. Yeah, I think this thing is just totally gone at this point. I've got to like make it just so it's like incredibly tight just to prevent it from falling down. I think it might be worth investing in a uh, proper like boom stand for my desk or something like that. Uh, so we're just going to block you. Interesting he didn't just swing with everything there, because I wouldn't have been able to kill... Well, he should have swung with the Dwinnens Elite as well, because I would have, would have only been able to block one of them. So, we will drop... Ah, oh, yes, we've got the fourth mana. Excellent. So, we'll drop you, and I think we'll also drop the Spectral Shepherd. So, yeah, next turn we can, like, flash in Thunderclap Wyvern. Uh, I'll skip attack for now, just in case. Basically hold open blockers for his... Uh, is one ones. Okay, so he's most funny shaman of the pack. So he's evolving wilds. So we're gonna take what like five damage here, going to twelve. So I think at this point we've just gotta be aggressive. It's good we just gotta go for it at this point. Oh, fantastic. We've got Tenacity as well. So next turn, providing we can survive this upcoming turn. So we're going to swing with you. Then we're going to flash in Thunderclap with him. So we should be okay, providing we can actually drop Tenacity down next turn. Because we'll get all that life back quite easily. So this is this is a tense turn, like I said, providing we can survive this turn. Okay, so he's just gonna like he's just gonna outright wreck, wreck save my Stoneforge masterwork. This point, don't actually care. So he can only swing four. Let me add this up: three, four, five. So he's just swinging with the three two. That's fine by me. You do that. I will take that three damage. That seems like a good trade to me, because like I said, we've got tenacity to pump back up our life. Got another Erdvold Illuminator, but at this point we're just going to swing with all of these guys. 
And then we'll go to Tenacity. We should just refill our life. How much damage are we actually going to do here? 3, 7, 10. Okay, wow. So we might actually have lethal. We'd make a stand next turn. And then we get that much life back. So we essentially just drained it from him because of all the flyers, which is why to, like Tenacity and Make a Stand are great for this flyers deck with all this evasion because we're just swinging over his head. With the elf deck nowadays, we don't have to worry about the Thornbow Archers either, which is quite nice. So unless he's got like a Languish, I think he's dead. And even then, he can't actually afford a Languish. So he's had, he's had to swing with everything and, you know, and yeah, we've won, which I thought, which I thought we probably would have done. As you know, we had that, we had that tenacity there, which was what we, exactly what we wanted to keep us in the game. Okay, excellent. Two wins uh, out of three, so not too bad for the Spirits deck for the first, uh, for the first episode, but we'll be running with this for the next couple of videos. Uh, but I'll leave it here for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you've enjoyed the episode. If you're new to the channel, it's always nice to see you hit subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.